Hey everybody, Professor Cruz here. Hope you all are doing well. I thought I'd add my two cents to this little putting together an emergency bag kit activity we're doing for this week and show you my own personal bug out bag and talk a little bit about the things I have in it, why I have them in there and how I've tried to put all this together. Now I've got my kind of main bag here and I've included some photos showing what this looks like when it's all packed up. Uh, it's upside down there, sorry. It's a nice clamshell bag, opens up pretty wide um, and allows me to hold a lot of gear for extended periods of time if I need it. I have two other bags that I mentioned and showed some photos of. This basically has all my climbing equipment, extra ropes, harnesses, carabiners, um, and things that I would use if I was ever in a situation where I needed to do some kind of an emergency rescue. And then I have a bag that I normally keep in my car, uh, minus the gas mask here on top, that's got additional first aid equipment, survival equipment, water purification, and many other things. So this is kind of a newer bag I put together recently to keep um, in my vehicle, because for a long time I was in New York and didn't have a car, so I didn't need a, a bug out bag for a vehicle. So I want to just kind of walk you through the different pieces in my kit here and give you a sense of what I have and why I got it here. So this is basically everything you see here is in this bag normally except for this water cube. Um, so this is really great. It holds a little over five gallons of water and it folds out into basically a big plastic square. Collapses down really nice. You can leave this filled up at home. You can take it with you on the road. You can use it for picnics, for kids' events. And although I'm skeptical, some people fill these up and even use it as a seat um, in an emergency situation. So that's kind of my, how do I get three gallons minimum of water? Uh, I would use this. I also have my usual Nalgene. I have a couple of these that I usually carry, at least one always on my bag, as well as a water filtration system, or sorry, a, a water storage system that fits into the back of that backpack there. Then I also have kind of an old Vietnam style canteen. This is great because it doubles as both a water storage device and a cooking utensil. So this basically flips up, slide this in, and you've got a small little pot you can do cooking in. You know, I was just warming up some peaches over the fire last night. So this is nice because it gives you essentially two things in one. And in an emergency, you can even heat this up, although you have to be careful of the plastic lid I'm on here that you don't melt that. So this is kind of a third backup water and cooking device that I carry um, as well. I've got a hatchet that also has a hammer head on the back. I can use this for chopping wood, sort of an all-purpose tool if I need to break glass or hammer in stakes on a tent or anything that would require a hammer or an axe. I basically have these together. It's also a great defense weapon if I need it and I can even hunt with it as a tomahawk um, in an emergency situation. And normally I keep this strapped to the back side of my backpack, but I have belt loops as well so I can carry it um, if I'm out in the field. This is kind of my trusty standalone um, pocket knife. It's got both a straight and a serrated blade. A blade here for cutting seat belts or other straps. A glass window punch. This can actually double as a bottle opener if you need it. Also has a small magnetic flashlight that fits into the top and a small magnesium striker for fire starting. So I traveled all through Nepal and India and Tibet with this um, and have used it a million and one times and this is kind of my daily carry um, EDC knife. And then another uh, basically fixed tang, so a single solid blade of steel all the way to use for um, all purpose. So this could either be worn you know, on your belt or I've got Velcro I added so I can keep it onto the back of my pack. I've got some masks, earplugs, um, hard candy in case you need a little sugar, um, golden salve, which is basically an antibiotic and kind of all-purpose um, care um, that some friends down in Southern Ohio make. A small roll of Gorilla Tape. Um, I prefer this over a big roll of Gorilla or duct tape just because it can fit in a small pouch. I can put it in my pocket if I need to. And it basically does everything I'm gonna need to do in most situations without taking up three times the amount of space. I'm a little hand sanitizer, a bar of soap, and a small Brillo scrub pad in case I need to clean this or anything else out. 
a small emergency bivy. So if you find myself somewhere where there's extreme weather or temperatures and I need to get immediate shelter, I can pop this out and get inside of this. Or if someone has hypothermia or something else, I can use this as well. A little bit of extra trail mix. Normally I also carry um, some basically uh, emergency ration bars, some that I make myself, uh, including some pemmican that I've been working on, um, as well as trail mix or other things for a little extra food. Just a little portable toothbrush and toothpaste. Uh, fire kit. I have about a dozen of these that I keep at least two in every bag. So this essentially has char cloth, a little bit of dryer lint, some matches, and some fire starting wicks. So I've got all the key pieces I need to be able to start a fire a couple different ways. Some tent stakes to use for a couple different shelter items I have here. Some hand warmers, some emergency light sticks, um, a few thin mini tampons. These are good to have not only for um, someone who's menstruating, but also you can use them to, as a blood clot. You can use them as a filter. There's a lot of different uses you can have, so it's always good to have some of these. I have a few scattered through most of my bags. A small portable pack shovel that folds up, fits in this pouch, and then attaches onto the side of my bag. I'm not gonna go through every one of these individual bags right now, but essentially um, this one is my fire and survival bag. So inside here I have all the kind of things I need for uh, knife sharpening, another emergency shelter, uh, one of those kind of, this is gold, but like a silver reflective emergency blanket, spare flashlight and gloves, a leather punch and sewing kit in case I need to do repairs out in the field, a lighter, um, and I've got some extra food and uh, signal mirrors and other things I keep in here too. So this is one of those that I could just pull it out of my bag and it's got hooks I could clip it to something or put a strap on it or a piece of rope or fit it onto another pack so I could take that with me. This actually is the bottom part of this backpack. This is kind of my grab and go bag. I can actually even take the waist belt off of there, fit it through here and wear this as a single day pack. So this is kind of my first level. If I was gonna separate it from the rest of my gear, I would grab this and go and have water filtration, fire, basic first aid all in that one bag. This is basically ropes and webbing for putting up tents, snares, any kind of an emergency situation. This is kind of a throw-all bag that always rotates around different things. Right now I've just got emergency food rations in here, but this used to be my uh, travel camera bag for a while. Uh, first aid kit including a uh, trauma care kit and a tourniquet in case of um, severe blood loss of some kind. Survivor core, which is really great if folks aren't familiar with this. It has not just military grade paracord that's good to about six or 700 pounds, but it also has a wire monofilament inside and um, a waxed fiber. So you can use this for starting fires as well. You can use the line inside to create snares, to trap wild animals, as well as the cord itself. So this has uh, multiple different uses all kind of built into one single cord. Then I also have this SAS survival handbook this is heavier than I would like to have in my bag, but if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you only have one thing, this is a great book to have. It basically covers everything you could need to know in a pinch without having any other resources from food, water, shelter, fire, emergency care, first aid and trauma, information about wild plants, wild animals, map reading, navigating by the stars, you name it, it's got a little bit of everything in here. So it's a great, um, I usually either have this or Tom Brown's Wilderness Survival book, one or the other in my all, at least one of my bags. Uh, this is just basically a, a water sack. I can use this to keep stuff dry or if I need to, for some reason, store extra water in, um, I've got that. And then just, I always have a few extra plastic bags in case I have something dirty that needs to get thrown in here or you know, if this were to get torn or something else, that I have a plastic bag like this gets ripped, I have a way to quickly replace that. And then just usually have a couple of spare bags like this. If I'm out hiking in the woods, it's great for picking up trash and other things. And this is a kind of basically a knockoff right in the rain waterproof notepad. So I can write on this with uh, markers or a pencil, uh, even if it's pouring rain and still be able to make and keep my notes usable for the future. And then I've got a couple different style of big Magnum Sharpie, uh, double-sided Sharpies, and then a couple pens and pencils. 
Uh, here I've got a small solar panel. I usually actually have a larger one that I carry if I'm out trekking, but just for kind of day-to-day -day use, this is great. Um, not super strong, but it does the basics. It's got a USB plug, so you can plug other things in, a phone, a camera, other things to recharge, a GPS, for example. A little power bank that I normally would plug into here and charge that up. Small flash drive to store um, important documents or other information, as well as a little micro SD and an adapter, 64 gigs, so that I can store and use this with other data. And then I have an adapter here with both the standard and the compact that I can plug into a computer or another device to be able to transfer. So I've got basically two different ways to store and transfer data. Uh, spare batteries to use for a couple of these electronic devices. A emergency weather radio. So it's got AM, FM, and the local weather band. Has a small panel, solar panel here, but this is basically not really for charging. It's just to keep your battery from being totally drained. But it also does have the hand crank here. So you can manually crank it up. And then it has a USB port here. You can see the cable so you can charge it that way. So there's you can charge it with the USB, so I could plug that into here to charge it, or I could use the hand crank. I also, you'll see I've got a note written here. This is the local weather band, 162.500. I find it's good to write down what your local weather band station is in case for some reason this isn't working or you're having trouble finding it. You can always refer to that, and if this isn't working, someone else has one, um, that's handy. So I would just write this on here and change it if I'm in a different place um, with a different weather band station. I've got a small fold-out cam, cam, or I'm sorry, binoculars here, and a compass. Simple, not super fancy, and then a local map, uh, waterproof of the area I'm in. So this is the whole state. Doesn't have a lot of great detail, but it'll get me anywhere in the state on a rough idea of where I'm going. So I've got a pair of gloves. Normally these would be my biking gloves, but um, I've included them in this as one of my possible, um, I always want to have a pair of gloves I can use for, there's a million and one times when you could use a pair of gloves to protect your hands, whether it's from heat, broken glass, whatever the situation might be, so it's good to have that. I've got two different flashlights, a headlamp and the swivel light. This is, I like this style of flashlight. It clips to your pocket. You can use it as a straight light, but the head also swivels kind of like the old World War II style um, lights. It has a magnet at the bottom so I can stick it to something metal to hold it in place. And also has this raised bevel here so I can use this as a glass punch in an emergency if I needed to break um, through a piece of glass. I've got an emergency whistle and a pepper spray. This has a quick release clip so I can normally keep it clipped to the side of my bag. I've got my emergency preparedness contact list that we did for our week one class activity, uh, spare adhesive pad, rain poncho. This is basically great for everything. I can use this as a rain poncho. I can make a tent out of it. I can use it as a tarp. I can make it into a sleeping bag. Pair that with my poncho liner. And I basically, these two things together is an emergency survival system. I've got a way to stay dry and a way to stay warm. And I put this with a piece of paracord or something else. I have everything I need to be able to spend time outside in um, adverse conditions. And this is just a pack cover, a waterproof cover that can fit over my backpack to keep everything dry if it's a really heavy rain. This is a little portable stove system. So this basically folds up and you just put, use one of these fuel blocks in the center. You light it and then you can set your stove on top of here and cook with it. This will give you basically all the fuel you need to cook one meal um, for one or two people. Then I've got an emergency tarp that has the silver reflective on the inside, so you can use this as an emergency blanket, or you can use this as a reflective surface, uh, and you can also just use this as a general ground cover or tarp. Uh, I've got a stretchy kind of head do rag and a smag cloth or kafia, which is great, not only for wearing if it's cold, you need something over your mouth if there's you know dust, if you're in, think about the fires going on right now around Chico. But you can also use this as a tourniquet. You can turn it into a small storage bag. There's a million and one things that you can do with something like this. Um, really handy to have on any of your go bags of some kind. Uh, just a spare rag that I keep so I can wipe stuff down. Stuff gets wet. Um, you never know when you just need an old junk rag to have in your bag. 
pair extra pair of socks, an extra wool t-shirt, pair of lightweight quick drying pants, and then a spare um, really light insulated top in case I'm somewhere where it's colder that I go up in elevation somewhere else or a t-shirt or what I'm already wearing is not enough. This gives me one extra layer to add into my kit. So as I said, basically everything that you see here with the exception of this water cube back here, um, this is stuff that would all fit into here so that I can take this and essentially have um, all the gear I need for uh, long periods of time surviving. I've got all the equipment I need here to be able to gather extra water to procure extra food in addition to the food I would already have with me. Once all of this is put in my bag, all the water bottles are filled, everything's up, this will weigh about 40 pounds, which is a bit heavy and a little more than I would like to have on a kind of a day-to-day -day basis. But you have to consider if you're stuck in an emergency situation, I can carry this all day if I have to at 40 pounds and have everything here I need with me. Or I could take something you know, like this pack, which is going to be much lighter, probably under 20 pounds, but then realize there's things that I need that I don't have with me that would have been in this bigger bag. So a lot of this has to, is a personal choice depending on what kind of a situation you think you're likely to find yourself in, where you might be, and the kind of things you might need. Obviously, if you're in a desert environment or an extremely cold environment where there might be snow or other things, you would need to rotate out and change some of these things. Maybe you'd need better winter gloves, extra hat, maybe thicker socks, things like that that I haven't accounted for. So this is kind of based on a Eastern Woodland Appalachian um, survival routine that I could use in both an urban and a rural setting. So I just wanted to kind of give you a sense. Now, obviously I've been doing this for a long time, maybe longer than some of you have been alive. I've taught wilderness survival in an outdoor education setting, I grew up in the Scouts. So I've spent a lot of time outside and a lot of this stuff all has multiple purposes that I use on a day-to-day -day basis for camping, for a backyard fire, for a weekend trek. But this is, if you know, I need to bug out, this is everything that's already packed in this bag. I'm ready to go, so I just need to grab a few things, less than three or four minutes, throw this on my back, and I'm out the door to wherever I might need to go and I've got essentially everything I need to survive. So this is just to give you a sense of the extreme level of prepping, the kind of um, things that someone might put together for an extended, pretty comprehensive emergency go bag. All right, thanks everybody for watching and talk to you all again soon, bye. Hey again, so I figured I should do a quick shot of me actually wearing the sack emergency go bag so you could see what it looks like, all packed up, sort of the spacing and the size. I'm about six foot tall, 200 pounds for reference in terms of fit of this pack. You can see, pretty snug. I've got good movement, nothing risking falling off. And as I said, this has got everything I would need for an extended period of time outside.